I remember last time I um, learned all those games of um, changing backgrounds and We have um, a visitor tonight. Yeah. Oh, yep. You made your background. I love the fuzzy background because then I um, don't have to worry about things behind me. Diane, do you know how to make a fuzzy background? We, we can't hear you. Hi, is that better? Yes, yeah. My, my machine is too old to change the background. Oh, okay, all right. So I, I sit in front of a topo map instead. <laughs> I works. used to just make sure things were tidy behind me before I made it, before I learned to make a fuzzy background. Yeah, so. no, the, the first couple of times I did this in the kitchen and decided, um, no. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I thought I found a way to um, add, you know, mustaches or weird images. Yeah, I think you did. Uh -huh. Wasn't I've, that you? I've lost that now. Choose virtual background. Brad, how old is the machine that you're on with that fuzzy background? Oh, this is a new one. Oh, I mean, yeah. new, it's a year old. Um, that's new to me. Where was that fuzzy background? It's behind you. Yeah, you have it. You're fuzzy. Yeah. You're yeah, yeah. But actually, how did I, your foreground how did I do is a little that? fuzzy too. <laughs> so you go to. Um, oh, there it is. There's you, that you one. You got it. Okay. That, I mean, yeah. that was just the blur. Right. Yes. Yeah. I don't know how people do that. Um, like the mustaches and things like that. Um, but yeah, I don't know how you do that. But I don't, I don't really need to know how to do that right now so um well. oh there we oh, go oh there you go yes <laughs> i can yes. really lose eyebrows. myself in these meetings if yes. you move your head too fast your eyebrows stay still ah uh, okay then <laughs> oh, now what if we um Yeah, yeah, much better. I'm more modern now. I think pink would be nice. Pink, pink? pink. Okay. Shocking pink. There we go. See if Tim notices. Oh dear, there's a setting that says, apply this to all future meetings. And what is this that you're, what function is it that you're using? So where did I get there? Um, I got to background and filters and then there's studio effects. Oh. Okay, I see it. All right, I would have to change the settings. Um, so, the, for the background? No. Uh, oh. Well, if I was going to um, add silliness. Um, oh, we did that last time. I remember. Yeah. I like the blurry background, but I can't remember how to do it. Um, click on the three little dots. Okay. in the right hand corner of your name oh yeah 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 okay and then what do you do and then you choose um choose you click on choose that virtual black background and then oh, it yeah. should have a choice for blur oh i don't have a choice it says none maybe it's because that's oh, interesting on. could you do it last time i don't yeah, well i put some silly thing on the filter's been disabled for some reason 
Oh, you know why? Because we're using the town's oh, um, okay. account. So okay. it might be that the town's account has certain settings, although okay. Brad was able to do it. I did it last time. I remember yeah. putting some silly glasses Yeah, on. but we might not have been, have been using the town's account. We might have been using the library's account. Oh, oh, is, oh. okay. You know. I was going to try to do that with a, um, a meeting I had for my work, but it was going to take up, it was going to slow down my computer. So I didn't need, I didn't need my computer to be any slower. So yeah. <laughs> it was not to. Yeah. Anyway. Hey, everybody. Good evening. Good to see you. Hey, Diane, it's good to see you with us. Thanks for joining. Um... Melanie's here, Brad's here, Michelle's here, Savannah's here, I'm here, Tim's here. All right, we are all here. Um, and therefore we can call the meeting to order. Um, I'm gonna be your host for this evening. Um, Miriam, would you like to do the thing? Sure. Um, so hi everyone, we are meeting here tonight on Zoom, a virtual platform um, due to the pandemic. Um, and this recording will be available with the town clerk's office until the meeting minutes are posted. Um, so that's, that's the, the usual disclaimer. All right, thank you very much. And um, trustees, did we all receive the agenda from Michelle and the minutes from Melanie? Thumbs up, excellent. So that's the first thing on our agenda tonight is to review the minutes from the January meeting. So um, opening for edits as needed. I read them, I didn't see anything that I needed to remark on. I thought they were great. I didn't either, so I'll make a motion to accept them as written. Second. All right, thank you, Savannah and Michelle. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you. Um, that was quick. And so um, then I'm gonna just switch this around a little bit, Michelle, and do the telescope policy review first and then the debrief after that. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, Marianne, would you like to talk about the need for a new telescope policy? Right. So I just want to make one or suggest one change. Um, the other day, a staff person at the Jones Library called and they had a young person who wanted to know if he could come and borrow our telescope. And I, um, I looked at the policy and it says shoots very residents only. Um, and, you know, the telescope, even before COVID, didn't go out very often. Um, and, um, and I think if somebody from, you know, if anybody's going to drive to the library to get the telescope, that means they need a telescope. Um, and, um, and, but I, you know, I, so he wanted it for this week. Um, and I thought, well, you all have a meeting this week and I could ask if you thought, I mean, it, is, it, is it really any more of taking a chance of losing the kind of expensive item than, than loaning it to someone who lives in Shootsbury? It's not really much more of a chance. Um, and so then I emailed the staff person at the Jones and I told them that I had asked that it be put on the agenda for tonight. Um, and she said, well, you know, don't feel pressured to do it on our account. We're not even loaning our telescope because of the pandemic. But that's the other thing is I think that um, we are, you know, I'm trying to learn how to provide full services in the library, even with the pandemic or as full as possible. And so, um, you know, uh, you know, so having, I. I've never said that, well, I think early on, I might've said the telescope wasn't available, but you know, we loaned the kayaks last year and um, I've started promoting the chemistry kits and the launch pads again. 
Um, so it seems like we could, you know, if not promote the telescope, at least if somebody comes asking for them, let them take it, no matter who they are. Um, as long as they're 18. And if it's somebody less than 18, he's going to need a ride here anyway. Um, I just happen to know that it was a young man. So, um, so that's why I'm using the male pronoun. Um, okay. So, uh, so that's the only change that it would just be, you know, any CW Mars card holder. Thank you. Melanie, I see your hand up. Mary, I just answered my question. I was going to okay. ask if it would be a library card holder and if they had to be in the state of Massachusetts and they have, you know, you just answered my question. Yeah. DW Mars card holder. Okay. Great. Do you have any other questions or concerns about the proposed change? Um, I have a question. Marianne, they don't get used much. Um, I would hope you would feel you had flexibility to deal with things if you got multiple requests and wanted to focus first on Shootsbury people, for instance. Right, right. Well, I, you know, certainly um, if somebody from Shootsbury, you know, came in looking for it and it wasn't there and, and I told them they could have it when it was due, then they would be next in line. So, yes, you know. So the only question that I had about this is that when people want telescopes, sometimes it's for a thing, like a time bound thing, right? Right, Because there's an astronomical event that's happening at that moment and you'll miss it if you wait. Um, this doesn't mean that I'm opposed to this change. I just wanna make sure that we're thinking about that. But right. you know, if we're, if, we, if that doesn't actually happen, if that's not how people use it, and you would know, um, right. then, right. then it's a non-issue as far as right. I'm concerned. Right, I really think it, the telescope, and partly it's, um, you know, the telescope is in a box tucked <laughs> under a desk. It's, you know, we can't have it on display because there's no place to do that. Um, uh, um, you know, for two years we've had, um, you know, fewer people actually coming into the library anyway. Um, but yeah. but the telescope has never been something that, you know, goes out. And I don't think I've ever told somebody that they, that it, it was already checked out and they couldn't have it, so. Gotcha, thank you. Michelle? Yeah, my only question is, is, um, is it, when someone checks it out, would it be for the same time period as a book or is there, like, is there any time? Oh, it has its own um, checkout period. I think it's three weeks. I think it's one week. Okay, um, that's what I wondered. But, okay. Yeah. All yes. right, so it already um, exists. Yeah, it has its own checkout period. Okay. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? Concerns? All right. Could we have a motion? Are we ready for a motion to... Approve the recommended change in our policy to allow for non-resident CW Mars cardholders to borrow the telescope. I so move. Thank you. Second. Do I have a second? I, I, I have one question. Oh, I'm sorry, Tim. Go ahead. I'm sorry yeah. I missed you. Um, we routinely let books out that go to residents other than Shootsbury through the Mars program, right? Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So in, in essence, it's not much different than that, is it? Right, it certainly wouldn't put this in the delivery, you know, um, but yeah. I just no, hate it's the just, I, yeah. yeah. I, I hate the idea of a the potential situation that Kate talked about that that Shootsbury buys a telescope and a Shootsbury town member wants it for a particularly interesting event and they find out that it's in Pelham or in Amherst. I, I really don't like setting the precedent for that potential, but I'm not sure how does that differ from somebody checking out a, a book through Mars that happens to be in our library. Yeah, I don't think it does differ. Um, 
And I, you know, this is a policy change that we're considering. If if we find that it's problematic, we can change it back, right? right. We can right. think of this as an experiment. We could even put in a sunset provision or something, say, well, try this for a year. And if there's a problem, then we'll know, right? So, I mean, there's a bunch of different ways that we could think about. Also, Marion, if you uh, find that someone in Shrewsbury needs a telescope and you've lent yours out, they could borrow ours. <laughs> we right. never, almost never use right. it. So. Right. I mean, then the thing is we could, we could put language in the policy that says instead of uh, you know, it's only available to Shootsbury residents. It could be Shootsbury residents have priority. Um, yeah. And, um, you know, and I and I really think it's going to be occasionally it'll be somebody from Amherst or Leverett or New Salem, you know, or or Pelham that's borrowing um, the telescope. And and quite a number of libraries do have telescopes. Um, and and even before the pandemic, our telescope didn't get a whole lot of use. So, um, so I, you know, and I don't, I don't know that this young man is going to come up this week and borrow it, but, um, but you know, we've got somebody out there who's not too far away who's excited about astronomy, um, and and we bought the telescope when we had that empowering public libraries to be science literacy resources grant, um, and so uh, you know. And, and, you know, and it's rare that public libraries restrict items in their collections to local borrowers only. It's not, it's not completely unheard of. And I, and we do that with the kayaks and I'm, I wouldn't recommend that change for the kayaks. Um, but it, you know, but I, it, um, anyway, it just feels like it, it's, within the spirit of making science resources accessible and um, and sort of part of um, the larger library system. So us being, a, you know, contributing more. Um, we take more than we give to the larger library system, you know, so. Yeah. Tim, does that? Excuse me. We'll have a vote, but do you have any? I see you, Diane, and I'll get to you. Okay, um, but just want to make sure that Tim, is there any follow up for, for uh, your no, question? No. Thank okay. you. Okay. All right. Thank you, Diane. Go ahead, please. Um, I'll bet there are lots of people in Shutesbury who don't know that the library has a telescope, myself included. So that might be why it doesn't see much use. Miriam, what's your response to that? I mean, I, I, I obviously we are all in the close circle of knowledgeable folks about what's in the collection, but I've certainly seen it promoted in various places. Um, you know, when you're, especially when you're talking about sort of science resources at the library. But right. what's your perception of that? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, I learned about it. it and... Sorry, Diane. I learned about it tonight. Yeah, no, I understand that. Right. That's what you're saying. Great. Yeah. It's, um, you know, something, uh, everybody doesn't read everything I put out there. Um, so, um, so it's, um, uh, and certainly we haven't promoted it for the past two years. Um, so, um, so it's, um, you know, and Diane, I, I think that, uh, the more I promote it, the more it might be used, but I disagree that a lot of people will use it. Um, so, um, and I'm gonna just uh, just go with my experience um, there. So um, uh, somebody wants to join in, so I'm gonna let her in, okay. Oh, great, thanks. Tim, go ahead, please. Yeah, I was just wondering if other libraries have similar items, not a telescope, but a let's say a scientific tool, for example, that we can borrow uh, in a similar manner, or is this a one-way street? Man, I, I don't think it is, but can you, do you know? Um, I don't know. I don't know what, like, what <clears throat> each library's library of things rules are. Um, 
so um you know my guess is that there are libraries that loan their library things to anybody with a library card who comes in the door and that there are people who um don't you know and that there are libraries that don't loan their libraries of things beyond their town board quarters but, you know um think about um, it first i mean as you can you can get any book down there it just it doesn't matter if you have a I don't think you have to have a card there. You can just have a Shakespeare card, can't you? A CW Mars card is a CW Mars card. Um, so, you can get so any with... any of the CW Mars libraries, um, the 150 or so libraries, a card is a card. But technically um, that just applies to books, right? No, it's it's I would say almost everything in their collection. Um, but I don't know about their their things. Um, you know, I don't know what the Jones Library has for for things that are other than sort of, you know, music or, or books or, or other media. Um, uh, you know, I, I would get, I bet they have musical instruments. Um, so, but I, I don't know what their policy is on those things. Um, just for the record, I think I was here about four years and I've kind of paid attention to the library since I moved into town, but I didn't know there was a telescope until I was here about four years. So, there may be a little problem of people being aware of it. I don't know if we've had the telescope for four years. Oh, <laughs> that could be an issue. All right, I just, um, I see you Savannah and I just wanna acknowledge Mary Lou has joined us, welcome. Mary Lou, I know sometimes you have challenges speaking on this, Paul, I'm not quite sure how to deal with that, um, but maybe I don't know. Could you can you can you talk to us? If you can, you can just unmute and say so. Yeah, unfortunate. I'm sorry. Doesn't look like it. Okay, Savannah, I see you. Uh, I, yeah, I was just going to say that. It helps if you have kids to know that there's a telescope at the library, because we had it here at our house, you know, once, because we had a kid. We have a kid who wanted to use it. Thanks, Savannah. That was our experience too. Um, okay, any other discussion of this? We have a motion on the floor. Um, it was waiting for a second. Second. Okay, thank you. Oh, sorry, Melanie, did you have a, were you just seconding? Sorry, I was writing notes and then I had a question and, okay, yeah. so um, I wanted to just go back and confirm what we're voting on because yeah. there was a suggestion by Marianne that we put in the change policy that um, priority is given to Shootsbury residents. I'm not really sure how that would be operationalized, but I just want to make I sure- I wondered that, that too. Know what we're voting on, so I can put it in the minutes. So, I mean, I guess we could say in the case of, you know, requests coming at the same time that the Shootsbury resident would receive, you know, the material first. Okay. Is that is that what is that what you're suggesting, Marianne? Yes. Um, and um, so here's the language that I wrote in a note to myself: Shootsbury residents have priority, but if it is available, the tel telescope can be borrowed by eligible cardholders from other towns. Okay. So that is the proposed language before us. Um, we have. I, I I'm gonna just do this again because it is a little bit altered just making sure that we have a motion does someone propose a motion to consider the language as marianne just read it i move we approve marianne's language thank you can i have a second please second thank you savannah all in favor aye aye you and this video number one uh, Tim, could you mute, please? I think that's you. Thank that's you. not me. Oh, no, it's not you. I wonder where that came from. 
Um, sorry about that, Tim. All right, so the motion carries. It uh, looks unanimous to me. Uh, thank you very much for careful consideration of this. All right, the next item on our agenda is a little bit of a debrief from the MBLC interview. It looked to me like we had a full quorum of trustees. Was everyone able? Are you feeling any tire sketchbook with Was everyone able to attend? I'm sorry if, if I missed. It looked like I, we were all I was, there. I was not. That's right. Are you it's hard to tell from in there. Savannah, is that you? Can you yeah, I'm sorry. My my uh, my phone kept going off, and I'm trying to turn it off. <laughs> okay, you can just mute for us. But, um, that would be great. That's so awesome. Um, all right, awesome. Thank you. So, just um, opening for a discussion. <clears throat> um, any of those? So, a few. Four of us were actually in the room, um, Brad, Michelle, Marianne, and me. Um, any, I, and I'm sure it was hard to hear what, between the computer system and the masks and everything. So um, Melanie, was that a hand I, of yours I saw? Yes, all right, go ahead please, Melanie. Sorry, I have trouble uh, navigating the taking of the notes and then making the screen yeah. bigger and then finding the hand. Yep, it's the a lot. That I have. Um, so I guess what I was um, surprised by was the MBLC's, the format, because I kind of thought that the meeting was supposed to be a conversation between the MBLC and the town and town officials. But then it was there was more kind of um, I don't know it was it seemed more kind of open um, and I I think that one of the reasons that surprised me is that then it I think because of the format it led to some people who were there from the public thinking that this wasn't promoted sufficiently when you know it. You know, it was put up as a public meeting, but my understanding was that the whole point of the meeting was this conversation between the MBLC and the select board, the finance committee. So I'm just a little bit, was a little bit um, kind of taken aback by that. I wasn't really sure what that, you know, what that was about. Yeah, thanks, Melanie. Well, I had some similar thoughts. Yeah. Michelle? Um, I just wanted to second that. That's what I thought the whole point was, that they were interviewing <laughs> us. And so even though there were other people there, I was surprised that other people were allowed to speak because I, I just thought that that's what it was, was an interview of the trustees and the town officials. That's That was my understanding. And Brad? I'm going to say the same thing in a different way. I feel like um, I agree with what uh, you two both said. And I feel like if we'd known that format in advance, we would have advertised it in a different way. We advertised what we understood and right. it turned out to be something different. Um, and it, there's not much we can do for that. Yeah, I did feel like sort of a little on the fly, you know, um, I'll acknowledge that. I mean, I'm just gonna name the elephant in the room, um, I think, which is the challenge that we have in composing a warrant article that we're confident putting before town meeting, given the MBLC's you know, declared preference that it be sort of fiscally open-ended and our understanding. I mean, I'm, I'm, Marianne, can you help with this? So, so I, I don't really think, I don't really think the MBLC expects the warrant article to be fiscally open-ended. They're having really a, a pretty extensive cost estimate done by 
a uniquely qualified firm. Um, and, and they're going to give us a number and the warrant article will be based on that number. Um, and, um, and that cost estimate will have, so, so when we did the grant last time, Michelle, you'll remember this if you think really hard, right? Because, and you've been reading through the grant application. So, but remember escalations and contingencies. Um, so escalations and contingencies are, um, their percentages that when you plan a project of this magnitude, you add percentages on to your cost estimate for, um, for, you know, for costs that are higher or unexpected costs or changes. Um, and, and, and those were pretty big numbers. They were, I think it was, you know, I think it was 15% last time between the two. Um, and, you know, so, so you, um, so I think because this is a pilot project and, and it's a, a, it's an unknown process because it's a pilot project from start to finish. And that's why what was supposed to be an interview, a productive interview with town officials ended up being kind of, you know, a little less productive and more productive or maybe, or a harder meeting that, um, that took longer because, um, uh, you know, because other, you know, because other people brought up different things. Um, but I think that they they expect that warrant article to have that cost estimate with those generous contingencies um, in it, and they fully expect us to ask for a number. So I think they're just trying to know: Are we prepared if something unexpected happens? Um, and then the other thing that I found to be encouraging was. In all the previous grant rounds, they, so you would have your, your budget. That's, that's the number that I'm looking for. So your cost estimate and then those escalations and contingencies are your budget that you present in your grant application. And then you, and then the, in the grant for previous grant rounds, the MBLC's portion was a percentage of the eligible costs. And and it was different based on, you know, it was a certain percentage up to 3 million and then it was a different percentage beyond 3 million. Um, and, um, and then there were extra funds added for um, the, because the town is a poor town, so our EQB. Um, uh, so this time the MBLC is paying 75% of the eligible costs, even if those costs are higher than what's in the grant application, right? Um, so, so for every other project until now, if the project came in over costs, the MBLC didn't put up more money than what their original grant was. So this time they're, they're willing to put up more money, which is really an interesting thing and a remarkable thing. And what's really, part, and it's really part of what's so remarkable about this opportunity for the town. Um, and, you know, but so anyway, they don't expect us to ask the town to vote on a black, a blank check. No town would. Right. right. Thank you. So I see Michelle and then I pop myself into the queue. Yeah, Tate, ahead, if, your, so. if your question or comments related to what she just said, go ahead, because mine's slightly different. Well, it is, and it, you know, I really appreciate your seeing all of this, Marianne. And and um, the other thing that occurs to me when I think about this is that you know the many of the costs of the building, uh, you know, of the project, the fixed are are eligible costs, right? M you know, much of the construction of the building. Um, our eligible costs, the things where materials are, are, the prices are rising or fluctuating or just uncertain. Those are the eligible costs, right? The ineligible costs are, are, are other things. So I feel like a big chunk of the, you know, of that uncertainty, 
75% of that uncertainty essentially is, is removed from the town's concern because of, so I would just like to check that, Marianne, is, do you think that's a, a fair way to consider this? To think about this? Yes, yes, because 75% of it is covered by, by the state if, if right. they offer us the grant and the town approves it. Um, and right. then the ineligible costs are, um, part of the ineligible costs are things like furnishings and, um, and site work. And some of the site work can be done by our own highway department. Um, and so, and while that doesn't have a cost, it's not free, because the highway department are actual human beings who, um, who we pay, it's, it's less expensive than hiring out. Um, and, you know, the highway department can, can put it into their work plan for a season. Um, and um, so, um, so some of the, the, the town's responsibility can be in kind and can be and we can source things um you know we can we can buy used furniture we can we can take donated um used furniture um and lots of libraries do do things like that so there are you know there are ways to um to keep costs down um but i think i think they just want to make sure that we're aware that you know and that we don't get stuck but yes um, you know, two thirds of the project are costs that the MBLC is going to pay 75% of the costs. And, you know, even if that is higher than what their uniquely qualified cost estimator um, determines, it, determines it to be. Thank you. Michelle, over to you. Um, although I feel like, I mean, I just want to say that both Marianne and Kate did an excellent job of answering the questions. I just would have liked to have had the questions beforehand because I did read what you, the questions you had already answered in writing. And so I guess I was surprised at the kind of kinds of questions, the number of questions that they asked. It would have just been nice to know ahead of time so that some of us could have formulated our thoughts better rather than being on the fly, but it is what it is. And I think, I feel like overall it went well. It's my two cents. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sure Marianne and I both appreciate that. Uh, yeah, I did feel kind of on the spot, but you know, I was glad that you know so many of the the questions were things that we've already thought about and talked about a lot. And I also really appreciated Brad's contribution at the end of the meeting and and both its content and its tone. You know. Okay, other thoughts or questions or considerations for our debrief? So we've identified some things which, you know, as we go forward, giving feedback on the pilot process, which we are hoping is a process that they'll repeat. And if we don't get the grant this time, maybe there'll be another pilot process that we're really well prepared to contribute to. But we also, right, we're doing a little plus delta on their role in the process. And we would have loved to have more clarity about the process of that meeting. And if it's truly an open and public forum, then let us know that that's what it is, as opposed to just a public oversight right like we have well, i think that's what we were expecting opportunity for oversight rather than opportunity for input and if it's opportunity for input then i would love to have let more people know so that's one thing and then yes a little more opportunity to hear the questions and prepare you know thoughtful and and fact-based answers um, i mean i don't think we said anything that wasn't fact-based or true but i just it's the union of concerned scientists staff person in me that just really likes to have all my figures at, at my fingertips. So. Well, Which as, a, as a former I, educator, I feel the same way. 
I know, and I and you know, all of us like to to speak confidently from 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 what we know to be true. Um, I am very sorry. I have a Washington Post reporter who, that I really need to respond to, like now. Um, can I know, Michelle? I know you're really tired, um, but I think we are almost done. Can you just tell me what else we have left on the agenda? Do we have any fun. other updates? Oh yeah. And then um, any next steps that we've identified from this meeting? I have not heard any except for we've got probably well captured in our minutes because our Assistant Secretary is awesome. The, the feedback for MBLC, if they ask for it, then we can give it to them. Um, those are the only next steps I've heard and I see Brad and then I, 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 I'll be right back with you, I promise. It'll be really okay, fun. I can take over. Go ahead, Brad. Um, moving beyond the meeting itself, um, we talked at that meeting about the, the next steps and Marianne, I think you repeated part of it at some point, um, but I never remember. So they're going to decide and it's going to take them about a month. They're going to take until sometime in March. And do you have a sense when we might know? Um, so, uh, so they, so they're waiting for the professional cost estimates um, and, uh, and which they hope to have by the end of February, but they, but they just started that process. Um, and so Becky asked for, um, they said that they would be noticed, that they'd be making a decision by March. And Becky asked when in March that would be. Um, and they said by mid-March. Um, so, um, and you know, it's, this is a pilot project and, um, and they're hoping that you know they're they're working through it and um, and discovering as they go and um, and sometimes uh, in pilot projects we discover they take longer than we you know when we, than what in fact I've never met a pilot project that didn't take longer than we thought it would take in the beginning. That's really We're following true. up on that one. Um, it seems like we're waiting on two things one is their answer you know whether we are awarded the grant or not um and the other is the number that would come out of the estimator um, which is the number we some version of which which we have to take to town meeting um is that pretty much a, an overview are those the two major things that we're that we have in line coming up in the next month or so okay thank you okay tim uh, time frame wise, uh, if we get that number in mid March, remind me again when the town meeting is and whether or not there has to be an in between meeting with the finance committee uh, for them to help make their decision on the appropriate financing. What's the time frame? So, right now, town meeting is scheduled for Saturday, April 30th. 30th there is oh it's 30th okay I was thinking it was the first and right. that's so, why I was right. concerned okay right uh, there is also conversation happening um so town hall has had some requests for an outdoor town meeting under a tent um because of COVID um and April 30th feels early in the year to yes oh. yeah um <laughs> so um <laughs> Uh, so there's, um, so I, I do think the select board has it on their agenda for their next meeting to um, consider, um, you know, whether or not um, they want to have an indoor um, town meeting and, um, and if they want to have an outdoor meeting, you know, moving it to a different What would time. you, what would you anticipate are the finance committee's needs in terms of preparation before the town meeting do they have do they just need to have the figure and have one meeting or what is what's your thought do you have well, a thought Kate okay. yeah I mean you know so the finance committee already had a conversation about this about various pathways 
for funding the project. That included a sort of ballpark range um, for the you know, cost um, that conversation did, which you know, helped them guide them in, in terms of various options for, for meeting the town's share. So I feel like they really need the number. <laughs> Um, and, and, but they've already got in mind different awesome. approaches. Okay. okay. I mean, Marianne, do, do you agree with that? I do. I do agree with that. I think, I think we need that number. Um, we need that cost estimate. And then yes, when we have that cost estimate, um, you know, then we'll schedule a meeting with, with the trustees and the finance committee, um, and, um, and maybe the select board too. Um, and, um, and then, you know, and then the, the, you know, the finance committee is still doing their work of, of preparing the town budget. Um, and, um, and so they'll have more information. Um, but it, but mid-March is six weeks before that April 30th date. And so it seems like it's enough, you know, it's, it would be, you know, to be, I wish we had more time because I think this is a big conversation to be having with the community. Um, and, um, and then, you know, we've also been talking about this since, um, since 2011. So, um, so, uh, you know, so it's, um, so that they're going to get us the information as soon as they can. Um, and then we'll, you know, have that conversation with the finance committee um, and the select board too, and then, um, and then you know, find a way to articulate um, what the plan is to the town. And we'll have, I believe, if if the select committee is discussing a later town meeting date, so that outside can be more comfortable, then we'll know that before we know the cost estimate. Right. So right. we will actually have a better, I, I, I'm hoping that when I go wrong, you'll jump in and, and correct me, but, um, but that means we'll have a better idea of our timeline before we even know right. the number. So you know, right. there's that right. going for us. Thank you. Great. Any other updates that we need to talk about anything? Um, is there any questions anyone has about the the position that uh, Marianne put an ad up for? Any any? Yeah, reason? actually, thank okay. you, Tim. I did have a question about that previously. You've asked for, um, I mean, maybe not for this position, but I remember for Cynthia's position, you asked for some trustee support in the interview and screening. Maybe for this, you don't need that. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't, right now, I don't feel like I need that. I felt like I needed it because it was a bigger um, yeah. position. And, um, yeah. and at the time it felt um, important, but I, this is really, this is, this is, uh, you know, this may end up being two people three hours a week um, or one person for six hours a week and not. Yeah, and, it's really and, different. Right, it's really different, so. Yes. All right, well, just assuming that you'll call on us if you do find yes. you need us. Thank okay. you. Well, was I correct in understanding that that position is for weekend hours only? Yes. And so if a person accepts it uh, and wants to get a weekend off, uh, what are their alternatives? Um, so I, I would expect that if somebody takes this position that they're prepared to work 50 weekends a year um, really? and and have two weekends off. Yeah. Okay. We, yeah. we had this position for quite a long time. It just ended when COVID first started. So. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Okay. Great. Any other business before us apart from naming our nest? meeting day. I always look at Brad who always reminds me. <laughs> Brad, go ahead. Just what you brought up. Meeting date. Yep. Gotcha. Thanks. Any other business before we wrap with that next step? 
All right. Um, so everybody take out your little calendars, however you keep your calendars, and let's look at I was wondering March. if we could go like at the 21st, because if it's mid-March, maybe we'll know the week before. Yeah. I think that's right. Um, How about the 15th, Tuesday the 15th? I was wondering about that too. You know, because they said by mid March. And so if mm -hmm. they tell us by Tuesday the 15th, we've got a meeting on the calendar um, and then can decide. Um, well, I guess I that's mean, why I'm suggesting 21st because right. we don't really know what they mean by mid March. But right. yeah. is mid -March. Here's what I would propose is we hold the we post the time for the 15th so that we i mean i think it's going to be important for us to be responsive to this you know and and making sure that you know townspeople are aware of this um and that i mean that just feels really important to me and so if we do know by the 15th, then we can make sure that we've got a plan for sort of rolling it out as information that people need to have. Um, and then if we don't have it by then, then we can fall back on the next Monday or the 21st. Does the 21st work for you, Brad? No, you have some Monday things, yeah. Both of those dates are okay. Okay. So are people comfortable with that? Maybe for our purposes, we will hold the both of those times for ourselves so that we are prepared either way. And then we'll still have at least a week of notice, which is, seems like a good amount. Yeah, that's fine. Brad, go ahead. So I think what you're saying is um, um, set the 15th as our next meeting date and have the set the 21st as a fallback if we need to adjust. Is that pretty? Exactly. Okay, good. Does that feel okay to people? All right, seeing nods and thumbs up. All right, um, anything else for the good of our order before we wrap up? All right, then thank you all so much. Um, we stand adjourned. Appreciate your work and, and, and guests, thank you for joining us. Good night. Good night, thank you. Good night, everybody.